So I'm going to hand you over to Jan Smith to do the rest. Thank you very much indeed. Well, the purpose of these blind tastings here, uh, blind tastings organised by Nick, is to make a fool of me, basically. Because um, it's not, there's not much fun standing up in a room full of champagne lovers and um, putting your, uh, yourself on the line. But there are quite a lot of wine professionals here as well. Um, so I, I'm hoping I, feel I can share some of the, the shame. Um, and I can also tell you that if, if anyone gets the 15 right, that will be a massive, massive achievement. I think in our professional blind tastings, it is so rare for even the finest taster to get 100% identi uh, wines identified. Um, but I will have a go, um, and um, it's probably too late to, in my working life to strip me of my... Uh, various awards and, and jobs, even if I get every single one wrong. Um, let just remind you about the, 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 what happened in 2002 in the vineyards. It was a particularly mild winter, um, and uh, there were a few frosts and a little bit of hail, but nothing very remarkable. Uh, it was very warm. The August was really very warm, and um, there were even worries about drought. But then there were some kind of grape-saving rains at the end of August, the beginning of September, oh. and they were followed by lovely last burst of nice, sunny, dry weather. So the grapes, when harvested, were particularly high in sugar and particularly high in acid, and so everyone was all set for it to be a very good vintage. Um, although, as Nick and I were remembering, that's what people said, high acid, high sugar, uh, about 1996 in Champagne, and we all thought the 96s were going to be fabulous, but actually quite a lot of them have, haven't borne out their early promise. Whatever happens, the most important thing is that you extract maximum pleasure out of this evening rather than think, oh, I'm, I'm getting, going to get this wrong. I mean, the point is to have some fun with it. Um, and no, no one is going to judge, um, judge you. They might judge me, but no one's going to judge you. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it. a little bit because I think it'd be fun to still have some champagne in your glass, uh, some of you, uh, <laughs> um, when we know what they are, because it'd be quite fun to go back and see why we made the mistakes that we did. I found these actually quite similar, not, not as sort of um, dramatically different as perhaps I was expecting. Um, I, I thought that they both uh, displayed the kind of richness of, um, of the vintage. Um, initially, I thought wine number one was, was much sort of tenser, but then actually with time, um, the uh, number two, which had a much less obvious nose, I thought, um, uh, it, it, it took on a bit of energy. Um, but I did end up... Um, Marginally prefer it. Marginally, I thought they were both very good, um, and um, I didn't. I, I liked the sort of denseness and 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 tense, tension of wine number one. Um, as I say, number two initially wasn't very expressive. I thought on the nose, but then it 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 opened out and and uh, became much broader, and it was impressively long. Um, so I'm afraid I didn't immediately go, oh, that must be X or Y. And I was doing it almost by a process of elimination, which isn't a very good thing to do at all. Um, the L'Anson Noble Cuvée. Uh, has anyone here tasted it? Because um, Nick's got it in his down as, as it hasn't yet been released. But when I went to look in my database of tasting notes, I saw that I had actually tasted it way back in 2000 and and 10, when I think it was submitted for the very last tasting I ever did for British Airways. 
So it's, it's odd that they submitted that wine when they hadn't actually released it. So by a process of el complete elimination, I'm, I'm wondering if wine number one was the long song, because it's one I've only ever tasted six, once, six years ago. Number two um, seemed a little bit softer than some of the wines that um, I'm expecting to taste, uh, but I'm doubtless completely wrong, so I plumped for the Belle Epoque. But, uh, because that's how I remembered that wine tasting. So the first one, uh, huh, which I initially wrote and then changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you can see. Uh, it was the, was the Belle Epoque. Um, very good to the, very good. Congrats to those who went there. Uh, and I just give, and I've got the, um, the spec here, which is great. So obviously it's 100% Chardonnay. Um, Disgorged, 31st of October 2012, and we've got provenance here uh, as UK stock. Um, and so there we are. So it looks like sort of maybe two people or three people voted, six people voted for Perez. Very, very good. And then number two, um, let's have a look again. Number two was Dom Ruina. Um, great, 100% uh, Chardonnay, of course. Uh, dosage 6.5. Disgorge September 2012, and it comes straight from Moat Hennessy, UK. Um, I should have got that. We should all have got that. <laughs> so fun to go back and just see. Mm. 